Hello, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this brief video, I want to go over some of the basic statistics and motions of planet Earth. For a long time, we've known the Earth is round. The ancient mathematician Pythagoras established this 2,500 years ago. You may recognize the name Pythagoras from some early geometry. In fact, many people get confused and think geometry is just about measuring triangles and angles. But actually, look at the word. Geo means earth. Metri, measurement. Pythagoras and others were really interested in measuring the earth. They were particularly interested in lunar eclipses. Studying lunar eclipses, they noticed that each time there was an eclipse, the shape of the eclipsed part of the moon was always the same. This always occurred when the moon was opposite the sun in the sky. The reason why the moon was eclipsed was that was the Earth's shadow falling on the surface of the moon. But the only shape that always produces a round or circular shadow is a sphere. Thus, the Earth must be spherical. It was this understanding that led to Eratosthenes' measurement 2,200 years ago, who, and he was the one who determined the Earth was approximately 40,000 kilometers in circumference. Now, with more careful measurement, we know that the diameter of the Earth at the equator is 12,756 kilometers. Notice I said, with more careful measurement. With more careful measurement, we now know that the diameter of the Earth from pole to pole is a bit shorter than it is across the equator. In fact, the Earth is what is known as an oblate spheroid. This bulge at the equator is due to the Earth's relatively rapid rotation. Speaking of rotation, let's talk about how the Earth moves. The Earth rotates once every 23 hours and 56 minutes. Now, this may come as a surprise to some, many would have thought it's 24 hours, but careful measurement shows that we rotate slightly less than 24 hours. Aristotle, 2,400 years ago, proposed that the sun went around the earth and the earth was still. It wasn't until Copernicus in 1540 proposed the idea that the earth rotated as it traveled around the sun. This was confirmed through various experiments, most famously in the 1850s by Léon Foucault, who established the Earth's rotation with his famous pendulum experiment that can be found in many museums. This rotation, of course, is also the cause of the east to west motion of the sun and stars. The Earth also revolves or orbits the Sun. This revolution or orbit takes 365.25 days. That number should look familiar. It's very similar to our calendar. The Gregorian calendar that we currently use is 365.24 days long. Ever since the 1600s, and the work by Johannes Kepler, we've known that the Earth's orbit is not circular. There are times when the Earth is a bit closer to the Sun. That's referred to as perigee, or perihelion. Apogee, or aphelion, is the point in the orbit when we are furthest from the Sun. Again, this may come as a bit of a surprise to find out that perigee, when we're close to the Sun, occurs on or around the 3rd of January, and apogee, when we're furthest from the sun, happens on or around the 4th of July. It's worth noting at this point that distance from the sun clearly has nothing to do with our seasons. So, if distance from the sun has nothing to do with the seasons, what does cause the seasons? Well, that can be quickly understood by understanding that the Earth its axis is tilted. The Earth's axis tilt at 23 and a half degrees causes some parts of this Earth to receive more and less sunlight. Look at this small experiment. 
I hope you agree that the sunbeams represented by A and B are very similar in size. When they shine on the Earth, however, you'll see that A is spread out over a much wider area than B. Since they're the same size and the sunlight is more concentrated at B when it hits the Earth, that area of the Earth will get much warmer. A, being more spread out, will have less concentrated or more indirect sunlight. The direct and indirect sunlight, coupled with the length of the day, is why we have seasons. So let's talk about a few of the important points in the Earth's orbit that are useful to mark our seasons. Equinoxes occur twice each year. Characterized by 12-hour days and 12-hour nights, occurring on or around the 21st of March and 21st of September, the sun appears to shine directly over the equator because the Earth's axis is perpendicular to our orbital path. In the northern hemisphere, winter solstice, which occurs on or around the 21st of December, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. The sun appears to shine directly down on the Tropic of Capricorn, giving the northern hemisphere the shortest day of the year. In fact, at the North Pole and areas north of the Arctic Circle, there is 24 hours of night, while the South Pole and areas in the Antarctic Circle experience 24 hours of sunlight. Six months later, during the northern summer solstice, or the 21st of June, the sun appears to shine directly on the Tropic of Cancer, giving the northern hemisphere the longest day of the year. The North Pole will experience 24 hours of sunlight, and areas south of the Antarctic Circle and the South Pole will experience 24 hours of darkness. There's one final motion that I'd like to mention, and that is not only do we rotate and revolve, the Earth also experiences precession. Just like a top spinning around on a table, the Earth has a wobble. Except the Earth's wobble takes a little while, about 26,000 years to make a complete cycle. Right now, the Earth's axis points towards the North Star, or the star we refer to as Polaris. Thousands of years from now, the Earth's axis will be pointing at a different location in the sky. Our Earth is a fascinating place to call home. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in another one of the Earth Science video series.